Pedro from AMP Reacts. I'm here today with Edu from Sifting. How's it going, man? All great, man. Thank you for having me. How well, are you guys doing thanks, there? Thanks for taking the time to come on the channel and, and chat like on our little corner of the internet. Oh, yeah, man. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And I'm really happy to talk with you. You know, you're uh, such a good friend. Yeah, man. I, 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 I was... I was thinking like I have to have you guys on the channel so I figured let me send you a message and see if, if you're not busy I know you guys are always up to something uh, you released a, a new video today and you guys are always you guys are always doing something so I, I know you're a busy guy and I was like oh let, let me see if you guys have some time if you have like 20 minutes of your day that we can chit chat talk about the band uh, about the record about everything so Thank thanks you, man. for taking the time awesome man of course no problem let me start off by asking you, how, how has this virus impacted the band? Um, well, uh, we've just been writing a lot. We've just been working on, on the creative part a lot. And uh, I mean, I, I guess, of course, impacted everyone at some point. But, uh, but we just try to, you know, take the best of it and started writing new songs and, uh, and having new ideas. To come up with the band uh, for example i started working on a documentary and uh, for the band and uh, we, we you know we started writing new songs for like new singles and uh yeah we just got creative as hell you know and uh, since we can't play you know outside <laughs> we're just trying to create all we can to you know to keep us entertained and keep the people our fans entertain too. <laughs> what can uh, people expect from the documentary that you're working on? Well, a lot of things. It's kind of like a docu series. Uh, we're gonna be talking about the, the story of the band, like from the beginnings, and uh, how you know the madness of having 23 different members, you know, uh, and and the band still goes on. You know that is. You know something really crazy when I tell people that you know I, I think we we have had more people than Megadeth and <laughs> people's like what <"Wow." laughs> that is that is a crazy statement <laughs> more than Megadeth okay you guys must be crazy so yeah so I just try to you know explain people what happened what has been happening and you know everything from the beginning and we had amazing people talking in it and uh, of course, you are one of them. Thank you. Yeah, for yeah. I was just going to say there. thanks a lot for for asking me to record a few lines and 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 have me part of it. I it, it was an absolute honor and pleasure. Oh uh, uh, yeah, man. I, I hope you guys can use it. I think I, I hope it looks okay. Oh hell yeah, it does look amazing. And, and yeah, the things you said. Thank you very much again. You really, you know, you humble us, man. Amazing. Thank you. By the way, that whole mega that thing, you guys should put that on a T-shirt. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> we should, right? <laughs> it's such a great marketing line. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, if, if not on a t-shirt, you definitely need to have that on the press release uh, uh, of, the, of the documentary. On the documentary press release, you need to have that. Like, it, it's, it's, it's definitely a selling point. I mean, if you've never heard of the band before and you hear that line, you're definitely going to go check out the band because it's like, okay, I, now I got I to gotta see it for myself. You know? <laughs> You're totally right. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I'll let the people press now for sure. <laughs> uh, what's take, take us a little bit behind the band and, and more so behind the the latest album, The Infinite Loop. How, how is the creative process for you? How, how do you guys put a record like that together? Uh, well, I, you know, I used to write all the albums by myself. You know, I was the only writer. Like the the other members, you know. They always recorded their instrument for us. They always, you know, wrote their parts and stuff. But I was mostly, you know, who wrote all the harmony and uh, melodies, lyrics. But with this album, it was different. Um, Richard Garcia, the guitarist, is an amazing composer, like out of this world. Like, I'm super lucky to have him in the band. And uh, he writes incredible riffs. Like he's more in the rhythm, like in the rhythmic part of the composing and the brutal, the brutality. Like he goes like in that direction, and I, I go more in the direction of melodies. 
I always try to, even a brutal riff, you can always expect from me uh, like a melody in it, like you can sing it, you know, like uh, a brutal riff. You you always like like you you can't sing it. So yeah. that's the kind of things that he writes. Uh, it's funny because we were talking about it last last night because uh, we make such a good you know combination for our music, and uh, so yeah, he basically wrote like a bunch of you know riffs and uh he just gave me all those riffs and i just turned them into songs you know and uh because uh he doesn't write melodies or choruses or you know uh or he doesn't know much about song structure that's more my part so i just you know try to use his riff you know on, on the whole song and try to you know create everything around it um but yeah we wrote most of the songs together, he and I, and um, we also, and some of the songs I wrote about myself, like What If, Enough, like the more, you know, the, you know, the more mellow songs I wrote more about catchy. myself. Yeah, exactly. More catchy. Yeah, that's my school, you know, but, uh, but yeah, that was the process. And of course, we have Joey, who is the most talented drummer in the city, like, for me, he's like, like no one knows how that guy drum, drums. Like he's so incredible, and uh, you know he brought all this modern and super heavy and brutal sound to the band that is just incredible. Same with Winston. Like he, his sound is incredible too, and his voice too. Like he sings, he can, he can sing. Like it's really good. So I think the combination of the four of us made this album like really unique like it's it's really good like i, I think i'm very i'm very proud of the product you know and uh and yeah that's that's how it went you know just put everything together and started recording it and we had it ready like in four months how, how much room do you leave for when you go into the studio like when you go in do you have almost the finished product it's just really recording and putting it together or do you leave yourselves a little bit of room to change a few things and and add a few things here to take a few things off of there um so well you know how things work nowadays like when you you know in the 80s you used to go to a studio and spend like the, the whole month in the studio and creating you know everything and putting things in out but nowadays, you know, you have to go with the whole song ready to start recording like no nonstop because, you know, everything's money. Like you have to pay everything yourself. It's not like before that, you know, labels pay for all the studio time. And but now you have to do it yourself. So uh, and that's something we do. And all, most producers always, you know, say that they love us because of that, because we always I write everything in, in Guitar Pro. Like I, I tap everything, I put everything in scores and you can, you can hear drums, guitars, guitar arrangements, because these songs are, you know, critical. Like they're so long, so many arrangements, you just can't remember everything. So you, at least me, I, 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 you know, I have to write everything. So, you know, I put down everything in the, in the guitar pro. So we all know our parts. We all know what we're playing. We map it out course we have the whole map of the midi that the temp tempo changes sick time signature changes you know there are a lot of those of course in this album like time time, time signatures are always changing in, the, in our songs and, and even the bpm so i have everything there mapped out and i just take it to the studio download the midi and the pro tools and that's it he just has to you know he just has to record press record and that's it because we have everything figured out there it's just recording so yeah sadly we can't you know modify much stuff in the studio at least from the structure part um we can always of course change melodies like hey why don't you sing like well this uh, particular album we recorded it with um steve evitz amazing producer and uh and he like he always pushes you to the limit like i'm bringing this line yeah and he's like no 
go higher. Come on, push it. <laughs> All right, that's what we're talking about. Yeah, come on, do it again. I thought I was, I did it. Okay, no, you have to do it again. <laughs> okay, now we're talking. So that's the kind of things, you know, that we kind of modify because we let him produce, you know, we let him do his job. And he's really tough. Like, it's not easy. It's not just like, oh, yeah, sure, I'll do this. You know, musicians always like try to, uh, do you want to change my melody, my song? You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's hard, you know, but uh, that's what they're there for. You know, producers, they always try to push you to the limits and, you know, you have to listen, you know, because they know about this and that's why you hire them. And at the end, it's always, it sounds like it's worth it. Like to me, at least it's worth it with Steve Evans. So yeah, that's basically what it is. The, the, the infinite loop, is that not only where the band is today, but is that, all, is that also the, the album is also a result of where the band has been in the, in the progression that you guys have made, all of the change in members, all of the change in people. I felt like the album kind of encapsulated not only the present, but also the past and perhaps giving a glimpse into what the future will have in, in store for you guys. Do, do you agree with that? Yeah, I think so, for sure. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, it's like, oh, it's like everything, you know, if you have new members, you have new sounds, new influences. And, uh, and of course, I am some, you know, I like to push my limits always. Like uh, when I write something, I usually write something that I can't play at all. Like, I'm like, okay, what if I play this line do, 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 super fast and I write it in, in you know, in the Guitar Pro and uh, it sounds like, all right, that sounds amazing. Okay, I got to study, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I just study it until I get it. You know, sometimes it takes me a month, sometimes it takes me three months, but uh, I, I almost never write something that I can actually play because I like to push my boundaries. And same with the guys, you know, they feel the same way. Uh, luckily, they always try to write stuff that's super, you know, challenging. And uh, and yeah, man, I think uh, that's uh, what was the vision again that I was going to. If, if this album is a representation not only of where yes. you guys have been, but where you guys are. Of course. Yeah, that's what I was going to. So uh, every album gets harder and harder and more challenging than the other one. So, yes. This album, it's it, like it takes that same school. You know, we're always trying to progress, and we're we're better than we were before for sure. And uh, but always respecting that melody and that uh, you know those progressions that make sifting sifting. You know, and and I think that's that's a cool thing. I have to, I mean, having you on the channel talking about the infinite loop and not talking to you about the song "What If." I mean, I might as well just turn off the computer right now and go do something else because I, I got to mention that song. You know how much I love that track. I absolutely love that song. I can't get enough of it. It's it, like it's still one of the songs that I get. I play on my iPod like all the time. It's just so hooky. It's so catchy. Great melody. It, it, it's just you know how much I love that track. <laughs> how did you put that song together? Uh, well, it was just... Uh... I'm still uh, upset by the way that you guys haven't done a music video for that song, but that's a different story. Uh, we have to, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's funny because that song was a product of me trying to, you know, I was, I remember I was in a tour with the guys talking about, you know, what kind of songs we can do for this album. And I, and I told them like, hey, Joey, uh, what is, like, give me an example of a catchy song for you. And he gave me a Slipknot song. I think it was, no, Slipknot, no. It was uh, the other band that his, uh, Corey Taylor has. Uh, oh, uh, Stone Sour. Stone Sour. Yeah, he, he showed me that song. And Winston, he showed me his song and, and Richard too. And I kind of like, okay. So I kind of created What If with the same vibe that those three songs, you know, gave to me. And uh I think that was a product. I, I wrote that song by myself, and uh, I remember Joey and Winston loved it. And Richard, uh, till till this day, he doesn't like it much. He's like, <laughs> "That's the that's the weakest song of the album," because he's more in the super prog world. And um, I am in, you know, I love everything that makes me, you know, vibe. 
if I like it, I love it. That's it. Like, I don't care if it's rock, pop, whatever, you know, I love it. I love it. That's it. It makes me vibe. So, uh, I, yeah, I wrote it by myself and, and, and yeah, I think it was amazing. I thought, I thought this has to be a single. And, uh, it's funny cause I show the album to Chris and he called me the next day. I was, he was like, dude, this album is crazy good. I don't even know what songs can be single. Like, like all the songs can be single. I mean, well, the songs that are like 12 minutes, of course, uh, because there are 12 minutes, but they're, they're also good. But, you know, every song of this album can be, uh, I actually wanted to create a video for every song, like, like make a whole story, you know, like a concept of the whole album, creating a video for every song but we just ran out of budget but uh but yeah that's something that i would definitely love to do at some point uh but yeah what if is one of those special songs that uh yeah my wife listens to it too and he, and she says like that's one of the best songs of the album i can't yeah. believe you guys don't have a video for it or you didn't even spend a cent on making promotion for that song and yeah, I'm like, I know. It's just super catchy, super hooky, melodic. Um, I mean, it's almost like radio friendly. It's just like it's something that that it, it's it, it's just a really great put together track. You know what I mean? It's just like there's nothing you can look at that song and say, wow, I would have changed this or I would have changed that. Like, no, it's just perfect the way it is and, and just leave it. Uh, I was actually listening to it a couple of nights ago, and I, I think I listened to it like four times in a row. When it came <laughs> off, I kept going back and just like repeating it. I, I just, I really love that track. And not to take anything away from the rest of the album, because you know how much I love the album, but that song is really something special. And how special that song is to me. Do you have a song on this record that that is the what if to you? Yeah, I think the title track, the Infinite Loop song is... A song that I never get tired of. Like I, like I listen to it. Like if if it's not mine, you know, I always like. Oh my God, I love this song. Like it takes me everywhere, you know, because it's a ballad at some point. It's super progressive at some point. Like it has all the elements that I love in a rock song, you know, or metal song. It have every. It has everything, and it's crazy hard crazy nice crazy soft everything and you know the melodies are amazing so i think that's a very special song to me like i mean it's, it's a hard question because you know i also love agony a lot and uh, the fifth element but if you if i have to choose i think the titles track would be my favorite song at least for now <laughs> at some point it was it was to stop calling me liberty but then I was I was listening to it every every freaking day. I was like, okay, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> you, you 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 sound like my son. My son, when he finds a song that he really likes, he plays it like ad nauseum. And then even <laughs> though I like the song, within three days I cannot listen to it anymore because everywhere we go, this song is playing, and I'm like, ah. Oh, for God's sakes, turn that shit off. Like, and he's like, oh, I thought, I thought you liked it. I did until you start playing it like everywhere we go. And like enough is enough. Like I need something different. So he, <laughs> he, he does that like all the time. I always tell him, you know, quit while you're ahead. You know, listen to it a few times. Change to something else. Because after a while, it's just it's too much. It's just, it's just too much. And, and by the way, th this brings me to, to a point that you mentioned the Megadeth thing earlier. And now I'm thinking that when I listened to the album and I did the review, I said that you guys were like the dragon force of Prague. I, right. I hope that was that was meant as a compliment, by the way. I, I hope you guys took it that way. Uh, yeah, I think uh, we're actually putting it in, in, uh, in the documentary, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we really loved it. We were like, oh, that's so freaking cool. We're really using it. All right. I, sure. just wanna, I just want to make sure because – I, I hate comparing bands and I hate even comparing albums within bands because I think you have to look at each album individually and th and then say that based on what this album sounds like, then is it good or is it bad? Not say that, oh, this is better than the previous or perhaps better than two albums ago. I'm not a big fan of, of that whole thing because I, I don't think it's fair to, to the new album to be compared. You just have to judge it on its own. So when I said that, I was like, mm, should I say that? I, I feel it. That's how I felt. But I never know how the band, how you guys are going to react to it. Because some people like it, some people don't. And, and I wasn't sure. So I just wanted to make sure that you guys took it as a compliment. 
Oh, for sure. Yeah. Thank you, man. Yeah. It's a, <laughs> a really nice thing to say. Like, we're not close to those guys, you know, technique, but we're trying. We're always trying every day. <laughs> oh, but you, you guys on this album, like, there's some, if, you, if you're a fan of guitar playing, and if you're a friend of Prague and even some elements like like that power metal element, like in terms of the speed and the technic technicality of it, the Infinite Loop is a great album to listen to because you have those shorter, more um, more ear friendly, if you will, songs like you know, like What If, and then you have those longer tracks, more proggy that take you into different directions that pull you in all these different ways with great guitar melodies. I, the album is such a nice package from that perspective. Yeah, I see it as a menu, you know, because I think I always thought the music as something like, like we can't be only metalheads. We can like it's 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 a lie. Like we always like like there's a Katy Perry song that you would say that's a nice melody, that's a nice song, <laughs> but I'm a metalhead. You know, deep inside we all like something that's not only one thing. You know, we're not only black, we're not only white, we're uh, you know. We're a mix of everything. That's humanity. That's how it is. And uh, and an album, I I believe it should be like that too, because because uh, you know if you only have you know twelve brutal songs, for me for me particularly, would be a little bit you know too much, because uh, I'm like you. I like listening to one thing and then leave it you know rest for a bit and. Uh, But when I listen to the Infinite, Lo uh, Infinite Loop album, it's amazing because, you know, you have of everything in there, like a little bit of everything that you can enjoy, you know, melodies, ballads, like progressive metal. And uh, you, you, I think it's like a menu and I think that you can choose from. So it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, one thing I have, before I ask you what I was going to ask you, I was going to say, talking about listening to maybe not Katy Perry, but the other day I caught my son listening to Michael Bublé. And I was like, <laughs> it's like, what the hell are you listening to? And he goes, Dad, I really like jazz. I was like, hey, dude, whatever floats your boat, man. Like, I, I don't, I don't, I agree with you. I don't think you should be limited just because you prefer metal. That doesn't mean you cannot enjoy songs and music that comes from other genres. I think for you, even as a musician, it broadens your horizon in terms of what you can create. Uh, and for the listeners, the same thing. It just makes you a lot more diverse. And I like that. Exactly. I yeah. think that's the way to be. But now I have to ask you about this because I've been dying to ask you about this for the longest time. I didn't want to send you a message or anything like that. I really wanted to talk to you about it in person. And that's about you guys getting played on Sirius XM Liquid Metal. I mean, that is huge. When I saw you guys coming up on, on the playlist uh, in my car and I see you guys even hitting the Devil's Dozen, I'm like, holy shit. They must have some pictures of Jose naked or something. And they're blackmailing the guy. I mean, there, there, there's got to be something. You know what I mean? Because it, it, it's really hard to crack that that station's playlist. They, they they pretty much always play the same bands. Let's face the facts. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's not like a Megadeth, Testament, Pantera, you know, some Parkway Drive, you know, Harm's Way, whatever. Some of that stuff. It's really hard to crack that that playlist it really is i i always feel like i'm listening to the same bands over and over again so when i saw you guys coming up and, and not just coming up they played you guys a lot i was really proud of you guys and i was really happy to see that but in my mind i'm like mm, they gotta have some dirt on jose they must like uh, how did you guys uh, like how did that happen how did it how did he discover you guys how did he got you guys on on the on the air well um Chris, our label guy, he's been friends with him forever, but uh, that doesn't do anything because actually Chris always says, like, Jose is, like, al almost never replies to an email, like, because he, he, of course, receives a million emails every day, you know? So it's really hard for him to kind of, you know, reach. And uh, so it was really hard for us to, you know, reach out to Jose uh, through Chris But uh, we were doing our PR with Maria uh, Ferrer, yeah, Maria Ferrero, like uh, she was doing our PR for the album, and uh, she also knows Jose. And uh, we told her like, "Hey, can you send an email to Jose and try to, you know, ask him if he can listen to the album? We just want him to listen to the album because we think we have something special there." And she said like, "It's hard, you know." 
but I'll try. Let's do something. Let's have Chris emailing him and I'll email him the same day. And they just did it. And, you know, at some point he just replied, I like stop calling me Liberty a lot. That's what he said. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I think that that was it. You know, that song just cracks him like. He really likes that song because, like, we all know Jose is a big fan of Metallica. And that song is, like, you know, a big, you know, like, uh, what I would say, uh, it's like a, a really a replica of what they were doing in the 80s. You know, it's a really nice uh, tribute, I would say. And uh, so he likes it. He liked it very much. And he just said that. I might play this song uh, soon, he said, and that's it. And but we we don't like we met him like in January because he invited us to a party, uh, a, a party that he had in there in his uh, headquarters, affliction. But yeah, that's 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 how we met him. Like that's how could that, you know there we took the pictures naked and stuff so we can. <laughs> get, get more plays in the future because <laughs> i was just, like yeah it, was it, 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 when, when i saw the, the band come up i was like mm, this gotta be a latino thing you know what i mean like jose you know you guys there, there's that that connection there because i'm yeah. sure that that helps as well I oh mean, yeah it helped a lot actually he said it in the documentary like he's in the documentary too and uh he he said that like oh when i saw these guys were you know from you know, from Mexico, Venezuela, Nicaragua, and United States, because that's the four countries we were from. Uh, he was like, oh, this is a really, you know, mix of, you know, South America with Central America and uh, and United States. So he thought it was a cool idea to help us, you know, because that's all his roots right there. So, yeah, I think uh, that helped a lot. And Stop Calling Me Liberty being a, a, a really nice song that, you know, portrays you know, a uh, really nice Metallica sound and, you know, all together, like these guys being friends. It's not just one thing, you know, but yeah, I hear you. Like in this industry, you have to have a contact. You yeah, have to I mean, know you someone. Gotta use, you got to use whatever tools you have, like whatever yeah. it is. It's either you know somebody who knows somebody or or your roots, your ethnicity, whatever it is. It, it, to me, it's all fair in game. It, it's all fair. Like for you to get to where you need you need to be, for that person to listen to your music and and to give you the the airtime that you guys need and deserve. So I I just thought that was really cool of him to give you guys the opportunity because, like I said, and you know this, that channel does not. You, it's hard to crack that channel. Like outside of the of the norm of the well-established bands uh even there's some well-established bands that don't get any playing time whatsoever so it's 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 tough so whenever i see a band like you guys uh popping up i even mentioned to my son because it, it, he he doesn't like the station because it feels very repetitive so it, he likes to discover new bands and listen to things that not necessarily would make it there because he likes to listen to catatonia and more of the doom black okay. metal which perhaps not the best for radio uh, but when I told him about you guys being on the radio station, he's like, holy shit, what the hell is happening there? It, are they having like a revolution or something? I was uh, like, oh, man, I don't know. I have a feeling that like somebody got bribed with tacos or, or I don't know, some naked pictures or something. You know? <laughs> so yeah, I was yeah, just happy yeah. to see you guys there. Yeah, yeah, we were very lucky. Like, And, and I'm, I'm, I'm super happy that Jose is one of those guys that, you know, he doesn't get like, you, you can't pay. There's no money. To buy Jose or anything, he won't accept any money from anyone. Like, and a lot of radios are like that, you know. But Jose Liquid Metal is not like that. Like, we, 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 we were, you know, trying to find a way to him to listen to us, and and one, that's one of the things that we, you know, discover at some point that like, he won't accept any money from anyone. Like, he will actually, if you name that, he will, just, you know, shut the door right there in your face. And uh, and that's pretty cool, you know. That's pretty cool because that keeps it like really uh, organic. And uh, and dude, yeah, you're totally right. When we were at the, you know, we never thought we were gonna be in the in the Devil's Dozen. Like we, th we only thought that we were gonna be like just in the rotation. But when we, I remember I was one day with my family and my kids in the park, and uh, Chris told me, "Hey, dude." 
Jose told me that he really liked the song and he it might even make it to the Devil's Dozen. You know, who knows? Maybe number 12 once. Who knows? So just every time, always listen to the Devil's Dozen just in case. And I was like, yeah, I always listen to it anyway. You know, I always listen to Devil's Dozen. So sure. And one day I was in the park with my family in a picnic and uh, all of a sudden it was number six already. So I, I knew nah, the, I, we're not there, but anyway, and number six from Los Angeles, California, sifting, stop calling me. I was like, what? <laughs> that can't really, I started screaming in the park. Like my kids were like, what's happening? I was like, oh my God, we're in the devil's dozen. Dude, that's so crazy. Like it's funny because all the bands in the devil's dozen are all super established bands playing you know, super huge festivals. But I mean, if you see the list, we we print it out and everything. It's uh, Ozzy Osbourne, uh, Ginger, uh, Slipknot, uh, you know, Sepultura, and then Sifting. It was like, what? <laughs> you know, one of these is not like the others. <laughs> yeah, exactly. One of these is not from there. Like people must think that we paid a million dollars to be there, but. No, dude. I, I promise you. I swear. <laughs> no, it was it, it was merely luck, and I think it was a merit. Like, cause that song is really amazing, I believe, and I think, you know, Jose really likes it. So, yeah, I think that was it. <laughs> <laughs> I have one more question for you, and this is an interesting one. So, if if let's say you were let's say you're not you, right, and you're putting a band together, right? And you walk through the door. Do you pick you as the lead singer of the band or as the guitar player of the band? I would pick me as a manager. Okay, <laughs> you're the manager. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's it. I mean, I don't know because uh, I I don't look like the singer. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I always I would I would pick someone like Richard as a singer. Yeah, you're the you're the leader. Uh, you're the frontman. You're nice hair, long hair. You look like freaking, uh, I don't know, like he looks like Iron Maiden's singer, I think. And uh, I don't know. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> you, basically, you would not hire yourself. <laughs> no, I like talking about look, looks and talking about playing. Is, yeah, I would say uh, guitarist, I think. Yeah, I would pick me as a guitarist, I think. <laughs> All right, that's good. I I'm glad that at least you would pick yourself to be in the band. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, yeah, I, I, I think I, I deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> I deserve it because, I, I, you know, I've, I've studied a lot to play. I know I know I'm not the best singer or not the best guitarist, but uh, I like in the combination of both, I think uh, it's hard to do the stuff that I do, you know, like and playing it at the same time. Like that's that's what I enjoy the most. I think when I when I started singing, I, I knew like okay, I'm not the most talented guy singing. I know it. Um, I know there's a bunch of guys there like sing like super high and you know, and guitarists that can really play like and they're 16 years old. <laughs> uh, but you know the combination of those two things and also writing the songs that I can write. I think it it you know it's a really cool thing. And that I, I feel that I'm really proud that I can do, you know, playing those really hard things to play and sing at the same time. Sing at the same time. Yeah. Well, that was a good answer. I like I like your answer. I, I You know, after driving your El Camino for like th two hours to the audition, I'm glad that at least you would pick yourself for to be in the band. So, <laughs> <laughs> and not just yeah. say, oh, I'm a roadie or, or something like that. Yeah. So, no, so I, 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 in, in time, I've learned to, you know, to... You know, to love myself. Like at the beginning, I I was always like talking shit about me. You know, about myself, about how bad I was as a singer and how bad I was as a guitarist. But at some point, you know, I just realized that that doesn't take me anywhere. Like talking shit about me is not gonna help me. You know, in any you way. Can get better, so, yeah. Yeah. So if you're like, if you're positive about yourself and trust and know that you're, you know, you deserve to be where you are because you've been you know <laughs> you've been working a lot you know yeah. so 
to just start like loving yourself more and having that confidence. And I think it's a really good thing to write new music and being a singer is confidence. You need that. If not, it's, 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 it's going to be harder. <laughs> I, I agree with you. Well, man, thank you very much for your time today. I really appreciate you taking some uh, a, a little chunk of your uh, of your afternoon to chat with me. It's an absolute pleasure. I'm glad to see that you're doing good uh, in sunny California. And uh, best of luck with with uh, with the documentary. I'm looking really forward to it and and some of those new singles you guys are working on. Keep me in the loop once once that stuff is coming out. Oh yeah, sure, for sure. Yeah, as soon as the single is out, uh, I will let you know for sure. And uh... Yeah, it's gonna be a really killer song. Like, by the way, I was gonna wear my sifting. I was gonna wear my sifting T-shirt, but I thought, okay, that's a little bit too much. <laughs> then, then it looks like you paid me. Uh, you know, like, yeah, I, yeah. Let's, so I was like, yeah. ah, you know what? I'll leave it for. I'll leave it for a different video. I'll, I'll, I'll wear it on 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 the next videos that we do or something like that. But because nice, uh, nice. <laughs> I was like, ah, maybe I'm pushing it a little bit. Maybe maybe it's a little bit too much. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for your time once again. Uh, best of luck, stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, we'll stay in touch as those new tracks come out. We'll be checking them out on our channel for sure. Hell yeah. Thank you, Pedro. Thank you for having me in the band, and love you, man. Thank you. Take care, man. Best stay of safe. luck. Yeah, okay, you yeah. too. You too.